What's going on my friends? Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode we are going to analyze and discuss all the different grip and hold types that can be found in rock climbing. Apparently we're moving from the bottom to the top with these technique episodes. From footwork in the first one to the basics of body positioning last time. And today I want to address an important topic when it comes to the top end of our body, namely hands and fingers. Some of you might think now, man, gripping technique and hold types, this is something one learns quite um, naturally, kind of naturally, just by climbing a lot. And that is true to some extent, like with any other aspect of climbing, if you're putting the effort and the hours in, then you can get to a decent level. However, I've been climbing a lot of years now and I've seen a lot of newcomers and their progression regarding the sport. And something that I've noticed quite often is that people get accustomed to inefficient and injury promoting gripping styles quite easily. The main message that I want to get across in this video is try to adopt efficient injury preventing gripping technique by incorporating the whole spectrum of various climbing grips as early as possible in your climbing career. You might not feel the need for it right now because you're feeling strong and your fingers are doing fine and stuff, but trust me, sooner or later you will learn it the hard way, you're going to get injured and that's going to take out a lot of momentum of your progression. I've been there myself. You can save a lot of time by doing it right from the beginning. That being said, what do I mean with efficient injury preventing gripping technique? In climbing we've got certain grip types on the one hand and we've got certain hold types on the other hand. You gotta be careful here, these two are not the same. Let me show you the grip types first. In principle we've got our four classics here. The three fingers open grip, the four fingers open grip, the half crimp and of course the full crimp. Apart from these we've also got the pinch and sometimes we also might want to push onto certain areas. This is for a special use in bouldering when it comes to mantling and sometimes we also might want to make a fist lock or a hand lock in slots. This is kind of an exotic example of crack climbing. However, as you can imagine, all these different grip types um, exist in a great variety. Sometimes you might have to exclude some fingers simply because there is not enough space to put all your fingers on the hold, for example in three finger crimps or two finger crimps or two finger pockets or even one finger pockets, also called monos. And as you can imagine, all these grip types can be mixed up as well. There are crimpy pockets and there are pockety crimps, however you want to call them. What I want you to keep in mind is that these grips do not only differ in hand and finger shape and number of fingers involved, but also in aggressiveness regarding inner structures like joints and tendons, especially the pulleys of your fingers. In our little listing here we went from the least aggressive, the three fingers open grip, to the most aggressive grip type, the full crimp. In general it can be said that excluding fingers will always make a grip type more aggressive like for example in two or one finger pockets or in three finger crimps. And that, at least in my experience, smaller pinches are more aggressive than wider ones simply because they kind of resemble the crimp a little bit. Now let's take a look at the different hold types. We've got slopers, pockets, edges, pinches side pulls, underclings, and of course, jugs. Again, don't get caught in binary thinking here. All these exist in all kinds of varieties, in all kinds of shape, size, and of course there exist slopey edges, pockety side pulls, and all kinds of other mixtures between those mentioned. However, what I want you to take away from this lesson is that there is always the least aggressive way to take a certain hold and then there is the most aggressive way to take that same hold. Let me give you a few examples. This sloper here, I can take it very openly with three fingers open or let's say four fingers open for example and I can take it in a more crimpy way like this, which of course would be here the more aggressive way to take this hold. 
Let's take a look at this pinch here, this edgy side pull pinch. I can take it as a pinch and on the other hand I can take it as a full crimp side pull, which of course again would be here the more aggressive way to take this hold. The number of options is usually the greatest when it comes to edges. Because we can take edges as three finger open, we can take it also as four finger open, as a half crimp or as a full crimp from low to high aggressiveness. Adopting efficient injury preventing gripping technique means using the whole spectrum of grip types for the whole spectrum of hold types. A lot of beginners get stuck in the full crimp simply because it's the strongest grip type usually for most people, especially at the beginning when forearm muscles are not that developed. Keep in mind that the full crimp only takes away forces from your muscles by translocating them into your tendons and joints where they over time will cause pain and injury. The other disadvantage of getting stuck in one grip type is that it simply leads to an inefficient climbing style. Imagine crimping every single hole of a root regardless of size and shape. You will get pumped a lot quicker simply because you're stressing always the same muscle fibers of your forearms. Switching grip types here will distribute the stress evenly to every single forearm muscle, which leads not only to a greater pump resistance, but also to a better training stimulus. In the end, I want to share one quick tip with you, which greatly helped me in terms of injury prevention and training response. And that would be, unless you're a competition climber, just never crimp fully indoors. Now I can understand if you're hanging in your project outdoors and you're in the complete sand thrill, pumped to the nose, and you really want to reach that anchor, you of course will crimp that next edge full gas, no matter what, I would do the same. But crimping plastic is just unnecessary and it's extremely injury promoting. Just try to grab those indoor holes as openly as possible. And that's already it for this technique episode. I hope you got something from it. Please tell me your opinion in the comments down below and don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you guys next time.